That's a wonderful sip. You did good. Good yeah. morning, everybody. Uh, I'm, uh, you know, as you can hear, I'm still sick, but I tested negative for COVID two times now. Twice. The wife, very little symptoms, positive. What? And I sleep with her. Well, <laughs> and that's other strange. things. But the point is, uh, I don't, you know, th before we move into anything, we have a, uh, uh, by the way, an interview with Larry Elder today, Ooh. which I will let you know is actually from the archive. And I don't know why yeah. we never aired it. Huh. From it was few, never aired. A few months ago, I think what just happened is we had something else sometimes that was maybe more topical. We had to pre tape him because he was in, uh, in Pacific time, as I call it, Satan's time zone. <laughs> yes. Exactly. And you will get to watch it and see how the exact same attacks are being used today and how he was the exact same person then. When they're trying wow. to say that now he's doing this for political theater, you'll watch it. You'll be like, oh, no, Larry, Larry Elder's the same guy. No, ah, nice. Same dude. But the point is with the coat, well, let me say Racist. hello to everyone first. Hello, Gerald A. Hi. How are you? Feeling better, are you? I'm, I mean, no. You said your <laughs> wife might have the COVID. Well, uh, we're not sure. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. She did, So it was inconclusive. And they, they say to treat that as presumptive positive and go get a PCR test. Oh, yeah, very nice. And I'll get into treating it as a potential positive. Quarter black, you good? Yo, what's up? I'm good. No, I'm getting better. No Rona? Not anymore. No. No, no sickle cell? No, 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 no none of that. No, it's all, no it's all sling out. blade microbes. It's all washed out. And uh, Dave Landau, who, by the way, is going to be uh, this Saturday right. in Beaverton, Michigan. And uh, Ahoy. How are you? Good. I don't know what... Th I've never been to Beaverton, but I would imagine that the audience looks something like uh, do something like this. Oh, no? I thought you had a... No. It was supposed no to idea. be beavers. It was supposed to be beavers. It was going to be This is a horrible start. But here's the thing I will say. Guys, a, about, a ton of beavers. <laughs> so many beavers, we didn't get it on the screen. Well, I, I sent them. They were adorable. Well, I, well, I'm sure that by the time we were done photoshopping it, they wouldn't be so adorable. Yeah, no, not <laughs> no, so much. that's true. Be crazed beavers. Come out to Beaverton. And I have a few questions for you today. We're going to be taking your chat after Larry Elder, but you think there are going to be some pipes bursting tonight in California? Oh, man. Yeah. Why, whatever, what do you, what do you think? Some fortification <laughs> happening? I don't know. You guys comment below. Let me know before. So do this again before. You actually get the results. Afterwards, uh, your point is moot. <laughs> <laughs> so I tested negative two times, yeah. okay? And the lady uh, who's doing the testing, I'm using the term loosely, she says, uh, <laughs> she says, well, you know, you tested negative twice, and one was a rep, and one was a more accurate. I don't know what they are. Yeah. Anyway, she said, but because your wife has it, I would just treat it as a potential positive. She said, so, you know, play it safe. Yeah. Don't go to, she said, self-quarantine. Don't see your, uh, you know, stay away from your kids for 10 days. Don't go to work for two weeks. And I go, ah, you're a liberal. See, because you don't understand <laughs> yeah. that these are life altering changes. If, yeah. Just yeah. don't, just remain, just don't, don't be employable for two weeks. Yeah. Don't see your newborn huh. children for 10 days. Like this is just, we're all in this together. No, we're not. <laughs> yeah, I think, it's, not. Uh, I think it's good just to treat every disease that could exist. Yeah. Instead of just something you might have. It just makes common sense. I treat polio yes. when I have a cough. Yes. <laughs> I just go, go the around in a chair like, what's wrong? Yeah. Hi, it might be a sinus infection. Could it, be polio. Could have, every time it rains and I get that little <laughs> I get that little crick in my knee, I limp yeah. and I say, I'll be a huckleberry. Yes. People say, what are you doing? I say, I don't know. TB could have been eradicated. Maybe Start it wasn't. shooting in the air. <laughs> so we're going to be talking about California. We're going to be talking about some new COVID tests. Uh-oh. Uh I should say COVID studies. Studies, okay. Um, which are very interesting. And we're going to be talking about the, um, the, the gala of the poor, the Met Gala. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> Tax the rich. The gala of the... 30 Gs a plate. The yeah. common man's yes. event. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. But hey, Stephen, it's for charity, though. It's for charity. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, then, yeah. So is the Hamilton. <laughs> hey, you know, can we take uh, one, of the most, uh, one of the most interesting uh, historical figures, right, in American history? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Make him gay and rap? Mmm. <laughs> Sounds delightful. What the kids want, it'll sell out. Um, okay, but before we get to that, leftist <laughs> teachers on TikTok, and this has been something that, this is also, the reason that we show this to you guys is because people do have echo chambers. Yeah. And I think it's important that you see when people say, well, people have gone extreme right, people have gone extreme left, that you see the difference between this is considered not only extreme right, but Ben Shapiro, this show, we're the Nazis. So this is as far right. extreme right as you get. And I want to show you what has been going viral in passes for moderate left hmm. on TikTok, where, you know, the, the, the chai comes are, are, are spying on us. And yeah. Yeah. Scanning okay. our faces. Along with our, it's black, okay. along with our Blackhawks from the Taliban. Mm -hmm. We got Blackhawk from Taliban, and we destroyed a school with uh, TikTok. <laughs> We're playing chess. You're playing checkers. You're so stupid. It's a 3D. <laughs> <laughs> it's 3D. Look, look, the screen is slow. More angle to see you. <laughs> so leftist teachers on TikTok have a new theory. <laughs> the thing is, if I describe it, I'm going to be accused of racism because it is. 
It is racist. Okay. But what they are presupposing is that teaching children to behave mm. is racist. But don't mm. take my word for it. I made a comment on one of Miss April's recent Kay videos David Hogg? about PBIS, in which I stated that <laughs> PBIS a, is white yourself. supremacy with the hug. And a lot of y'all wanted to know more about that. So here we go. First of all, thank you to Jack Copa, who um, reminded me that um, Dina Simmons was the first to coin this term. So thank you, Jack, so much. So if PBIS concerns itself with positive behaviors, um, we have to ask ourselves, okay, well, what are those positive behaviors? And it's That's things good. like making sure that you're following directions and making sure that you're sitting quietly nice. and okay. you are in your mm -hmm. seat yeah. and all these things that come from white culture. Oh, shit. The idea of just sitting quiet and uh, being told stuff and taking things in in a passive stance is not a thing that's in with many cultures. Wrong. So if we're positively enforcing <laughs> these behaviors, we you just are said by only white people behave. <laughs> elements of white culture, which therefore keeps whiteness at the center, which is the definition of white supremacy. You can't say that. First off, this. this uh, <laughs> oh, man. This same sex attracted David Hogg, I don't know the proper term, uh, shouldn't ever say the word whiteness without accompanying it with this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't think I've seen any. This is just another way of saying yeah. that black people yell out at movies. It really is. It pretty you much could have burned your Jiffy Pop, but bitch. <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, if whiteness is at the center, it is not supremacy. Supremacy is on top, you moron, you teacher. Everything else is below. If it's just a part of everything else, it's not supremacy. Well, yeah. How I about took issue with that. How about the next time the kid's unruly, you treat him like Big Mama and just beat the <laughs> shit out of him? <laughs> Go get a switch! Kick your switch yeah, out the tree! It's like, it's like, you ever Sit seen down. a kid reach for like a candy bar at a grocery store and you're like, oh man, this is gonna hurt. Now. <laughs> but I'm gonna watch. Here's the thing, Here's the thing though, uh, as well. Um, I don't entirely disagree. We've talked about this in the sense that young boys, it's yeah, not a, it's not a race yeah, thing. Yeah. And this is what happens, right? This is how they try and conflate race and gender. So I've talked about this in the past when I used to say, look, I don't think that same-sex marriage is the same as heterosexual marriage. Right. Doesn't mean that I don't want kids to be in a household. I'd rather than be in a household in the system. But I think the ideal is with a mother and a father. And they would say, well, that's, a, well, that's the same argument people used against interracial marriage. I said, that's, that's a complete red herring. Why? I don't believe that a white mother can provide something that a black mother couldn't. Right, I believe yeah. that a mother can provide something that a man can't. I believe that men and women are intrinsically different. Yeah. And men and women and boys and girls learn differently. That's true. It's not black and white. It's young boys don't typically learn sitting and taking notes. That's why they score lower throughout all of their formative years, right? Grade yeah. school, high, junior high, high school, and then blow girls out of the water in the SATs when they can study on their own time and using their own methods. So it's important to know. Yeah, I think. Why don't let's find some common ground there. Reform the way we educate young boys. Yeah, but you, or be racist. You gonna let kids run roughshod over the school though? Like s sitting there and being quiet? Okay, so they just get to run around with I've their seen hair those on fire. Videos. Yeah. Does, does that sound like learning to you? I don't know. <laughs> Pretty interesting. I saw the substitute with uh, what's Tom Berenger. Well, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if I throw one or of these kids out the of the chalk. window, how many do we have left? <laughs> I saw the substitute two and three with Treat Williams. Really? Yeah. Yeah, I did say. God yeah. didn't say, Joe, be polite. <laughs> well, it really is. It's a it, different movie. Yeah, there's not a, what was it, 187, where they're all doing Russian roulette at the end of the movie? Oh, I have no idea. Yes, right. you do. Let's move yes, on to more white do. supremacy. Dead because poet I have, society. I have a criticism of this next person who, who happens to have uh, more melanin in the skin, as Nick Cannon refers to it, soul. And a wig. Oh. Ooh. Is that true, quarterback? It's definitely a wig. He married us. Oh, I have no idea. 100%, that's a wig. See, I'm going to do what that former gay TikTok... Whiteness. I don't know how to identify <laughs> weaves. Does Nick Cannon still have Bigfoot tattooed on his back? I have no idea. That is a big woman he married. <laughs> a sturdy girl, that Mariah Carey. <laughs> Not she dropped a him. woman. Um, no. Joy Reid was really mad uh, talking about Nicki Minaj from the Met Gala. Oh, yeah. <laughs> because Nicki Minaj, and by the way, this is something that they don't really often talk about, the fact that you have black Americans who are actually probably the demographic that are the single most vaccine hesitant. Yeah, yeah. It's not, yeah. Necessarily, it's not Republicans, not conservatives, but black Americans, because they're like, well, you know, syphilis, all the stuff yeah, that the government kind of did. We don't really trust Just you. You've been telling us, right, to try and mm -hmm. to try and really sort of coma, coma our entire community for votes. Yeah. The entire system is oppress, uh, uh, oppressive and racist. So we don't really trust you now. It's like, no, I'll trust us when it comes to this vaccine that we put in your arm. They don't. However... Uh, they let the mask slip a little bit when Joy Reid was furious yesterday talking about Nicki Minaj at the Met Gala because she didn't want to get the vaccine. Uh, here you go. And people like Nicki Minaj, I have to say this, 
wig. You have a platform, sister, that is 22 <laughs> million followers. OK, I have two million followers. You have 22 million followers on Twitter for you to use your platform to encourage our community to not protect themselves and save their lives. My God, sister, you could do better than that. You got that platform. It's it's a blessing. It's a blessing that you got that, that people listen to you and they listen to you more than they listen to me. Solution. How about you both just shut the hell up? <laughs> mm, hey. <laughs> I got more of that around here. Let's find some common ground. I think we I got to go with yeah. Nicki Minaj on this, though. I think she has the right to use her platform for how she feels. Yeah, yeah well, she had a friend who she said I'll, she said the balls were swollen. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, uh, I'm a that little hesitant. Be an and, uh, STD, it's 2021, so you have to ask if the friend was male. Yeah, I don't, uh, I don't yeah, agree that she... A friend thinks... got elephant balls! Is it a male? Of course it's a male! It got balls! <laughs> What's the matter with you? You mean a person with balls? A person. A person. A balling with, person. Balling person. <laughs> person with a penis, guys. Person with a penis? Y'all mean a man? No. No. Y'all no. mean a human man? Nick, no. Nikki. Nikki. Not Nikki. talking about Nikki. frogs, Nikki. asexual and shit. This ain't Jurassic Park. Of course it's a man. He got balls. Nikki. <laughs> The, the, the out of touch, the out of touch nature of the Democrats with the black community today oh, yeah. is unbelievable. If you were to pull black the black community on the LGBTQ AAIP, they like, what? Right? You pull them. They want more policing. Eighty six percent want as much policing or more. You pull them on government mandated vaccines. You pull them on overall trust of government. You would think that it was the January sixth insurrectionist. Yeah. Easy. <laughs> what is the poll that you're doing? A yes, B no, C what? <laughs> How many? How do you spell what? that? <laughs> How many things are you going to add to that letters? <laughs> That's too many letters. Mm-mm. Mm. G2Q? Vowels and shit. So uh, <laughs> this this is something that happened on CNN, too. And we're going to get to the Met Gala. Because I just dick. think the Met Gala is perfect. <laughs> uh, this morning, the CEO of the Texas Association of Business, Glenn Hammer. Look, he was on CNN. And this is why this is important. You know, that we always name. try and make sure yeah. that you guys are... Uh, are aware of what's going on, again, yeah. in the opposite side's uh, echo chamber. Yeah. CNN, and they're not MSNBC, they're supposed to be neutral. Th- this is a moment that we were watching, you were watching this this morning, right, Yeah, Gerald? I was. We were watching it live, and we said, you gotta pull this clip, where it's someone who walked out, this host, with her DNC talking points, and in no way was prepared for the most basic, yeah. four-word, statistically accurate response and then tried to backpedal. I don't know that you have a more perfect example of how, again, out of touch uh, and out of sync the left is. Here you go. You, I just want to highlight one of your arguments. You say the vaccine is the most effective way to prevent the transmission of COVID-19, of it course, is. right? Um, it's right. also the way to get the Texas economy back on its feet. I mean, if you just go back to the what? economic, I'm, how I'm, do you... Well, no, my, is rocking and rolling. Glenn. We're the strongest <laughs> economy my, in my the question is... Oh! Okay, my question is, how do you? Okay, but it. Can, may I, let me ask my question, Len. You tell me what. How did? How does it help anyone if someone leaves a larger company, goes to a smaller company, or just drops out of the labor force? I mean, this is a half-baked proposal. No one saw this say, coming. Half-baked. Everyone knows that it was terrible process. It's going to be challenged in the courts, and you know, I, I, I don't think this was the. This was a terrible process. We want people to get vaccinated. The president should have brought people together. Instead, he did something, unfortunately, that continues to divide us. We'll see where this conversation goes. <laughs> no. No, the conversation ended. She didn't realize. She goes, this is the way to get the uh, Texas economy. He's like, what are you so talking about? Oh, 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 you're in New York. Yeah. Yeah, you don't understand. <laughs> or maybe she's in D.C. I have no idea. But no, it's not California. Oh. It's not New York. Don't you understand? Just This is when people say, for example, if someone argues overpopulation, you just go, drive across the country. Yeah. If yeah. they say the economy has been decimated, you say, oh, uh, drive across the country. They have no idea. We talked about this yesterday with Ben Shapiro. Look, you can look at this on a state-by-state basis. States like Texas have done well. States like California, states like New York have not. She wasn't ready for that. No. Nope. It hadn't even occurred to her. She just didn't pull <laughs> basic economic data. And then she, tried to say, she was like, what? She tried to what say, well, what's about? the way to optimize Texas's economic future? <laughs> I don't know. You know what? I'm going to answer your question with a question. Should we do it like California? Yeah. How do you think yeah. that's going for you? I thought we were going to stay successful, but what do you think we should do? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think, we're open to suggestions. Yeah. Yeah. Please. I, I feel like she's like, haven't you been watching us tell how scary this is and you guys yeah. are still open? 
Have you considered a tent city? <laughs> yeah. Well, we got some in Austin. Do you so. have a sanctuary? Yep. Do you have overpasses in Texas? Uh huh. Could you? How many them? people can you fit under there? Yeah. yeah the cartel hangs people from them because our economy's awesome. <laughs> <All right. laughs> Hey, by the way, look, we're going to move on to Met Gal here. Uh, podcast, uh, you can listen to the podcast in case any of this oh, stuff yeah. is in trouble on YouTube. Ooh. We're on Apple, Android, Spotify. And the best way to tune in, hit the notification bell, but it's a live show, Monday through Thursday, 10 a.m. Eastern. Yeah. Make it a part of your routine, yeah. live, without a net. Do it. Like Chris O'Donnell in Batman and Robin. What? When Nipple his parents suit. died. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yes. And again, my question is, what do you think is going to happen with the California election? So let's continue with this AOC. <sighs> Do you I'm, think? Do you I think, can't help myself. Do you think that? Uh, do you think that the Democrats feel the way about AOC, like like that Republicans feel, conservatives feel about like the the QAnon shaman? Like do you think they're just <laughs> yes. like, oh, or do you think they they really think that she's rejuvenating their base? No. See, I, I disagree. I think that the Democrats want her. I don't. I think she's a useful idiot for them right now. Sure. As long as they get votes, eventually they're going to cast her out. But if she gets too powerful, she will eat them. Yeah, but the Q, yeah. Uh, but the QAnon shaman to us is a useless idiot. Oh, that's true. Yeah. 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 Funny. Okay. I think they know, yeah, if she becomes the leader of Heaven's Gate, they're like, you sure we got to cut it off? Right. <laughs> Have we gone too far? I, I, just, I think she can still stump for me. I don't know. I was with you until, why Why can't I bring it on the spaceship with me? <laughs> <laughs> What's this weird smell in the cooling? So, yesterday, she attended the Commons Man Gala, uh, the AOC Gala, mm. <laughs> basically. Yeah, it is. That's what we'll call it. Yeah, the AOC Gala, <laughs> wearing this truly inspiring dress. My God, tax the rich. Oh, what she can a read. Model <laughs> AOC. What up? I didn't know you model as well. Oh my God. Damn. I love how she's acting like this is new, like Taylor Swift winning her 19th award. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> I, 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 I don't. What? Am I? Who oh, is this tax? I didn't even know. <laughs> I love how she's acting like everyone there isn't rich. Right. Yeah. <laughs> isn't it funny, guys? Not really. I'm no. talking about. Which, you by the way, is myself. a little little different from her fellow squad member, Ilan Omar. Took a different route and uh, made an even bigger splash with her dress, "Smash the Patriarchy," uh, and your brother, oh, which okay. seems oh, almost like an admission a on the nose. There, thing. Ah, Elon. Oh, so to, to carry on with 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 Dave's point, quick reminder here. Met Gala tickets actually do go for about $30,000 a piece. And I know you're saying, oh, well, hold on a second. It's a fundraiser. For sure. It goes yeah. to the Museum's Costume Institute. <laughs> what? I'm just glad that we can get that done. I'm glad we can get that done. And I say this as a man who owns a studio where we have an entire back room full of really weird costumes. <laughs> but they're yeah, cheap. Pretty, it's not weird. lost on me. <laughs> there should be no endowment to the arts. Let me just say that. There should be no... Well, look, if you guys want to raise money for charity, sure. But here's the thing. They bitch about the church. So Samaritan's Purse, for example, who they bitch about and complain yeah. he's Christian fundamentalists, go into uh, Liberia when Ebola has a 50% mortality rate. Yeah. Right? One of two, The only private organization, I believe, the only non-government entity to go in and serve people. Church is the American church, the most charitable institution in the history of the world. Not just the United States of America, far more charitable than the government. They create soup kitchens. They help members of their church. They reach out to the community. These people spend $30,000 a ticket, although let's be honest, a lot of them are comped. That's it's true. the plebes who pay the $30,000 a ticket to go to more hyperly gay TikTok-esque fashion. <laughs> It's expensive. Yeah, but they to dress look like homeless that. people in Peter Pan costumes. Right, That's and if true. if right? if That's the gala is any least. indication, there'll be more outfits like these. This is what we're talking. about. Yeah. Oh, that's such a terrible. What is the? <laughs> what, what is, is that? that in the middle? What's on the left? He looks there? sad. What the hell? <laughs> the left was Kim Kardashian, actually. That was, was, that, really? that was a key job. That's what that is. That was Car Kim Kardashian. Yeah. yeah. That's Ooh. the uh, that's the Taliban's yeah. job. Yeah. That is. That's the 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 newest fashion in Kabul right now. Yeah. Oh. She th like, that was a, that looks like it was a mistake. Like I said, green morph suit. <laughs> oh my! Cut the face open. I said blue man group. I wanted to have a trash can, but the paint, the hey guys, and everything. It's black man group. Get it? <laughs> is this is this Mr. It's Mark? Play, it's know? my dating history. Oh boy, you ain't black. Um, so <laughs> Me back to AOC though, and it's a good point. You realize this? This is this is a lady. This is a abroad, if I may, and I may, uh, who <laughs> sells tax the rich sweatshirts for fifty eight dollars. Wow, oh, fifty eight. Back in uh, twenty twenty, she wore a fourteen thousand dollar outfit for her Vogue photo shoot. And she's like, ah, guys, who cares? I didn't keep it. Doesn't matter. You're trying to make people feel. What? What about the self esteem issue? You're trying to make people feel lesser than for not having a fourteen thousand dollar outfit. You think that it's 
harmful to people's self-esteem, you know, not having a BMI over 40 on a magazine? What about putting a $14,000 dress on a magazine? Uh, by the way, illegally parked her Tesla. I don't know if there's anything more elitist than illegally parking your, tech, your Tesla behind the Whole Foods. That's only <laughs> no. two blocks down. No. That's insane. Uh, what a jerk. <laughs> I can't. It'd be like so it, it'd be like the equivalent to the most diverse human being ever. It's like that's a single, uh, a single black mother amputee from Detroit uh, who's uh, trans with rickets. You're like, well, that checks all the boxes, and wow. even something I don't have here. It's like parking your Bentley on a homeless man. Yes. <laughs> You're like, will you watch this while I go in? <laughs> Do you need us to validate parking? No, Skid Row. Ah! <laughs> I have to get fair trade coffee. I'm sorry, you're bleeding. Yes. I have to get. So I have to get. Uh, I have to get slave-free chocolate. Excuse me while I run over Jamie Foxx playing a violin. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wish I loved that stories exaggerated. I wish I loved anything as much as AOC loves running over homeless men. I. I don't think anybody does love anything that much. And she. Uh, she still she owes, by the way, two thousand dollars in taxes from twenty twenty for a failed publishing company. So what? she. Do, she hasn't. Look, you can pay those taxes. You suck. Let the government teat. She owes taxes. Yes, I thought. I thought as Tax American them. citizens, if we owed taxes, they came for us. They well, came knocking on the doors. The, the good thing is, I'll give her two grand. She spray painted a white dress at a thirty thousand dollar gala, where yeah. they will give it to uh, you know other other costumes, which they consider fashion. But um, her abuela still doesn't have a roof. So hey, oh, well, oh well. but there was a GoFundMe for that. I thought we took care of this issue. It wasn't should, allowed to go. I know. I'm just saying. Yeah, it wasn't allowed to go because she was offended by it. I thought she was shamed into at least paying for the roof and saying, no, no, abuela, I'll take care of it. Oh, no, 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 no. no? She has no shame. Didn't ah, you see the video that we showed? I just, yes, I <laughs> yeah, no she must have fallen asleep. Mm -mm. She illegally parked her Tesla at a Whole Foods two blocks down. Did you miss that part? You heard that, right? Oh, I did, yeah. Well, she was going to go to Whole Foods later. Right. Oh. Well, I mean, you know, it would be. Back. In other, here's the thing. What I'm saying is she perpetuates all of the negative stereotypes. She does. Some, whereas the ones on the right don't really exist. Certainly not as far as someone in office. It would be like if I, re if I started a house fire by resting my tiki torch because I had to go pick up my clan's hood. <laughs> That's the, that would be <laughs> the right-wing extremist yeah. version <laughs> of parking your Tesla illegally at a Whole Foods two blocks away. <laughs> and it wasn't even February. So. <laughs> it is acceptable in February. <laughs> it's cold. And here's a way, too, by the way, another blatant display of the hypocrisy at uh, the Met Gala was, here's something to people understand, the elitists, only the workers had to wear masks. Only, only the workers were wearing masks. So you have a bunch of celebrities out there and multi, I don't know, how, tens of thousands of dollars, sometimes hundreds of thousands of dollars in outfits, not wearing masks. Only the workers serving them wear masks, except for J-Lo and Ben Affleck, because oh. they just had to oh. out-gay oh, the fellow TikToker. <laughs> How does that work? Gay! <laughs> Fringe, bro. Taco flavor keys. I, I just think this is, look, you wonder why Republicans, you wonder why Donald Trump has picked up the blue dog Democrats. It's because people, whether you understand this or not, people don't want to be sermonized to about taxing the rich and the wealthy from people who are at an event that looks, it look, it look at glorified hunger games. That's exactly, look, exactly. That's oh exactly God. what it is. It really is. <laughs> wow. That's, that's not creepy. even a stretch. That's literally no, what it is. It's yeah. just. Well, except it's weirder on the left. It is. <laughs> we officially passed the <laughs> like, Hunger Games. We passed the Hunger Games. We're way past We're the We're start killing kids. The, yeah, that's... AOC did try to get out ahead of this, though, Stephen. She did well. say that, you know, I know people are going to say I was at this event, but, but celebrities and, and local politicians get invited to these things all mm -hmm. the time. Yeah. So that was and they are scary. killing kids. They're just not out yet. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. They're doing all of the... Just in the back room. <laughs> Gosh. And don't you, don't you love to... That the, the tax rate keeps changing, like Joe Biden, like uh, when it was Barack Obama, and every family met when he was VP, every family making uh, over three hundred thousand dollars a year. Now he's president. Yeah, yeah. and anyone making over four hundred thousand a year, really? Hmm. Well, what what happens at four hundred thousand? Well, that's my salary cap. <laughs> <laughs> three ninety nine nine. <laughs> What a dick. It's so transparent. Well, yeah. Just tell us what you want. So tax the rich. Okay, fine. Take all their money. Do it today. We've already talked about this. It won't pay for your programs, AOC. It's just, look, and I want you, you guys come and tell me where you think the tax, the mar top marginal tax rate should start. I just don't believe that we should create a system based on envy, right? People try and say, oh, greed, it's selfish. Actually, I, I don't think that greed is uh, a synonym for success. I think that uh, taking someone else's money that you haven't earned, ill-gotten gain, is envy. Yeah, I think mm -hmm. that those two are interchangeable. 
But just Reed the- can also be power, which she's clearly into that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's very true. This is, we really are at a point here where um, they want to pit everyone against each other based on money and then hope that you don't understand that they are a part of this elite ruling class. Yeah. Well, Robert Reich is along that same ilk. He always tweets out, like, I can't believe Jeff Bezos makes a hundred and something thousand dollars per minute. And I'm like, I can. You yeah, shut down the cares? entire economy, and basically we had Amazon, and that was it. Everybody uses you guys Amazon, and they love it. <laughs> then you quit your job in the 90s when you see something coming. Build, yeah. Put all your money right. into something. Build a company. Create something. He's allowed to make the money that he made yeah. because he's the one that took the risk to make that money. I wouldn't be out there building penis rockets, but that's just me. Right. Also, I don't. I think they need I to do it without car. subsidies. <laughs> yeah, you might prefer. No, a car. I agree. But that's, that's the whole the difference. Penis car. Yeah, that's the whole yeah. point. Though. Ambiguously gay duo plan. penis car. Right. <laughs> what were we saying, Drew? I was about to say, these people don't have a plan. They well, just want. The this is also slogan. the fact that they talk about the top one percent of Americans. This is a self-defeating argument. Let me explain to you what I mean. They are talking about the rich here in America because guess who's part of the top one percent anywhere else in the globally is the average American, yeah. poor Americans. So the fact that they are holding Americans to a higher standard of, well, the top 1%, oh, so anyone making over $33,000 a year? No, no, we mean the top 1% of America. Oh, the country that you hate, which is the only country that has afforded people the opportunity to be in the top 1% of the globe, and then we're talking about the top 1% of America, that's the top 0.001, it's almost a COVID mortality rate. <laughs> almost. Oh. Yeah, 30, no, uh, yeah 30 grand is the line too. It's for, something like 33,000. Yes, Someone yeah, can bring yeah, that up yeah. in the control room. I think it's if you're making over 33,000, yeah. you're in the top, I don't know if it's 10% wow. or 1% globally. But this country that is, we have far too much wealth inequality. We are, we are lagging behind other countries. You are using the standard that this country created exclusively. Yeah. And I know some people will point to some Scandinavian countries. This is something we've also talked about. Swedish Americans have a higher quality of living and make more money than Swedes in Sweden. Same thing for Danish Americans. They created what they have under free market economies and then migrated towards sort of a hybridized socialism. But the point is, if someone says tax the rich and they mean the rich in America, isn't that nice? For, glo- for globalist people, for people who want global government, the UN, right? They want us to share the same currency. For these people to somehow, well, no, hold on a second. We're going to create the dividing lines by American standards because, well, you know, significantly higher. The same applies to mortality rates in hospitals. The same applies to quality of care. The same applies to technological innovation. We are graded on a curve. And America is, it's blown past everybody else historically. All right. Now we can move on to the COVID, which is fun. Oh. Yippee. Ooh. Are we talking about you or? I don't. I mean, I tested. <laughs> we get a COVID Look, update on I you? might have it, but I told everyone here, I tested negative twice. Yeah. That's good enough for me. I, I mean, I don't think you should be kissing Dave, but nonetheless, yeah, I think that's close enough. I mean, we can't break Liberace tradition. Liberace <laughs> tested negative twice, too. <laughs> yeah, I blame the puppets. <laughs> Freddie Mercury. Um, Mom, my wife has it, but also my, my one of my relatives, I will say. Yeah. Her husband had it. Yeah. And she was looking for a, an exemption from the vaccine for something that I won't get into, but she actually has a medical condition. You know, my yeah. wife has GBS, and so anyway, you guys can sort of make your own inferences. I don't want to give away too much right, information. Right, right. Yeah. But I heard her on the phone talking about the exemption with the other person who, you know, the other Karen on the, the other end of the line saying, no, you can't get an exec- exemption. And she said, look, 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 my husband had it, okay, for a week and a half. I slept in the same bed with him. And I screwed him and didn't get it. She didn't say screwed. <laughs> yeah. It's a good point, though. Yeah. yeah. Some, look, we don't know why some people have more of a proclivity toward horrible symptoms than other people. We know if you're obese, that's, a, that's obviously oh, yeah. a yeah. delineating factor. And if you're older. Yeah. But outside of that, there are some, it's rare, there are some younger, healthier people who could be blood type. We don't know. There's a, there are a lot of doctors. Like, we don't know why some people have a reaction and others don't. Yeah. Tested negative twice. My wife has fewer symptoms, tested positive. So um, Isn't that with everything, too? When I you guess, really think about it, I yeah. mean, some people get cancer, they beat it. Some people, you know, don't. If these are fake, if these are false negatives and I'm actually positive, yeah. I would describe this as a, a moderate cold. Okay. That's honestly, I mean, and my, my wife just had a fever and she was really, she was tired. But. And that would be great if, if you guys ended up with like a very, very low yeah. kind of symptom yeah. thing. Because right. then you have I the antibodies it. and you're good to go. Well, you know, my both or my parents had a fever. Both my parents had it recently. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, fine. They're, they're better now though, right? They're totally oh, fine. Well, my dad was fine no matter what. I was worried about my mom because she has, she's had sort of Lung pneumonia issues. before yeah. and she has asthma and bronchitis. Yeah. Yeah. They're fine. 
Totally fine. Totally yeah. anecdotal. Totally anecdotal. Right. Used a cocktail of of uh, ivermectin, whatever else they had. They then they. My dad was already improving, but then went and did the antibody treatment, the monoclonal antibody treatment, which was dismissed as quackery not that long ago. Yeah. Uh, or then it was also dismissed as uh, something that only the elitists could use. It's, f- it's free in Texas. That's insane. My what parents I- are dead. Let's talk more about your healthy parents. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> your living parents. Yeah, but like you said yesterday, that's probably not a bad thing considering what's going on here in America. <laughs> no, no, I'm glad they're gone. <laughs> I am so glad that there are very their few sake. World War II vets left. Oh, oh. oh yeah. They, I can't imagine the ones that are. Could you imagine the greatest generation putting up with this crap? No. no. Huh? What in holy hell? You can just see that scene this? in Private Ryan. Earn this. And it flashes to the fat Some guy at Folsom Street Fair. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no. Like, uh, no. <sighs> I was wrong. I meant like a longer lasting light bulb or something. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> oh, we developed LEDs. Ah, <laughs> uh, you ruined Christmas. <laughs> I was like at the end of Saving Private Ryan where he's going to the uh, cemetery and you can yeah. tell that his like granddaughters are just bored. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, they just don't realize. It was, it was going were, for realism. They were on their early flip sidekicks. Yeah, yeah. They're just like, <laughs> this is stupid. Granddad fell again. Somebody. Oh my God, he's so dumb. <laughs> Fought for our freedom. Uh, what are we why are we here? here? Are we here? You don't know the soldier. Yeah, seriously. Like, <laughs> war is like a million years away. Yeah, we're oh. never going to have that again. For crying out loud. I'm if, a dude, by the way. If we, yeah. <laughs> I'm a mountain. Come on, I mean, man. I still got my period, yeah. but I'm a mountain. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Today. <laughs> I'm on TikTok. I have a lot of followers. Grandpa has none. Grandpa has none. <laughs> he doesn't have <laughs> any followers. So He's stupid. so lame. You lose. My friend went to the Met Gala. She had a dress that looked like a swan and sang like that. Yeah. She's super cool. It's 30 grand to play. Pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But Sorry, I, couldn't, I couldn't wish she couldn't eat because she's a pescatarian. Sometimes I cut myself. <laughs> it's a different story. Uh, yeah, it just makes me feel. How sharp is this gravestone? <laughs> <laughs> By the way, I have never, just so we, before we move on to COVID, talking about death, this is not, I've decided what I'm going, you know, you've asked me, like, what do I want to do when I die? No, we have a plan. No, but now I have a different plan. No, no oh, that's a different plan. plan. No, that's to kill me. Uh, oh, okay. That's to kill me. Well, no, but it's if you're oh. going to die anyway. If I'm going to but die anyway. Yeah. 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 <laughs> in depth. Yes. <laughs> but then I told my wife that I don't really, she was like, do you want to be cremated? Do you want to, because in, in French Canada, they almost always do open casket. My wife is, they've often been cremated. Yeah. I said, I don't care. You know, leave me out for the trash on Tuesday. It doesn't really make a difference to me. <laughs> yeah. But now I know exactly what I want to do because there's a cemetery mm. that has like pre-Civil War gravestones oh, around okay. here. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah. And uh, I was thinking it would be really cool. Like what, there was this, there's a mausoleum. You know, in there, and yeah. I said, I want the biggest mausoleum that we can get at the cemetery. And uh, when people go in, I want someone to accurately, you know, accurate to scale, replicate my body, only a little bit decomposed, and make it like a haunted house. So they yeah. want to pay their respects and just. <laughs> I like it. That's a good idea. Yeah. I like and it. And they have to go the through and like people jump out at them. So even in the afterlife, I'll be busting people's balls. I make, like sure, it. make sure the ass is to scale as well. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so. We'll have to have a counterweight. Um. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a new study there. And by the way, this is a new study that comes on the heels of two other studies. Yeah. And to be clear, this study involved thousands, thousands of cases that were reviewed. Now, it's not definitive. I just want to be clear. But it does matter. In other words, this may not be entirely definitive that it doesn't tell you everything. Yeah. Uh, then again, neither does CNN. So a new preprint study published by The Atlantic, uh, the indication there was that 50% of COVID hospitalizations may be mild or asymptomatic uh, cases. So they looked at 50,000 wow. hospital admissions for COVID yeah. uh, with the VA, to be clear. Now, I know what you're saying, because I'll get to that in a second. The VA, there aren't as many women uh, or children. So that's that's the next step. They're going to allow 14-year-olds to... It's going to be a camouflage Sorry. propeller mm-hmm. cap. But Jeez. this is something that I've talked about. I talked about with, remember, Ben Shapiro, uh, ye- I mean, years ago, really, at this point, at the start of the pandemic, a year and a half ago. I said, the number that matters is death per capita. And I repeated it yesterday. We've talked about this the entire way through. Why? Because you can't, well, you still can manipulate those numbers if it's death with COVID, but it's far uh, less prone to manipulation than cases, because right now we don't even really, I mean, I just tested negative twice, but they said treat it like a positive. Yeah. Yeah. Do they list that as a positive because my wife is positive yeah, in the household? Yeah, they have to report it. I have no idea. How many tests does that count as? When they talk about hospital admissions, we'll get here in a second. Guess what? If you're admitted to a hospital because you're getting tested at a hospital, let's say there's no place around you that has rapid testing. The only place is a hospital and you test positive for COVID. That, in many instances, is a hospitalization for COVID, right? Mm-hmm. So this is important. This doesn't give you the whole picture. Deaths per capita 
gives you a more clear picture, provided we have the criteria that is clear as to what constitutes a death with COVID as opposed to from COVID. For example, the guy who tried to blow his own head off with a shotgun right. uh, shouldn't count, but he did. The guy who got into a motorcycle wreck and happened to have COVID shouldn't count, but it did. Still, there's right. less foul play with the deaths per capita. So they looked at 50,000 hospital admissions for uh, COVID at the VA. And they found that 45% of unvaccinated patients had completely asymptomatic or very mild symptoms versus 57% of the vaccinated. So either way, that's about half had no symptoms or very mild. Yeah. Now, this is not in a very small percentage of those people actually ended up dying. Yeah. So we need to be clear about this. That means that half of these hospital admissions, when you're hearing about it, are just people going to have COVID? Oh, okay. All right. What do I do? Go home, drink fluid? All right. Yeah, because I think they- That's half. They only bring you in if you're sick, sick, right? Like until you like you get a bed in the room and everything. Well, you would think so, but no, not a 50% are asymptomatic or very mild cases. Wow. In other words, at the VA, they were counting these as hospital admissions because someone was in the hospital mm. who happened to have COVID. Yeah. Why would they admit you if you have no symptoms? Yeah, it doesn't make sense. You're like, hey, I'm not feeling well. Do I have COVID? And then versus I feel great. Do I have COVID? Right. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. Why are you there? So, and this is this is also important. Well, that's a good point. Everything's here's stupid. why I think some people go there. Right now, they're afraid. These are completely unrelated. Vaccine mandate in the United States, right? right. 100, 100, uh, 100 employees or more. You have to force them to be vaccinated. Or, according to Joe Biden, according to Fauci, he's giving them an off lane. It's being moderate. Right. Test them every week at a cost of the second that was announced. Find a test within fifty miles of your house. We can't. Like a rapid response. I was texting you yesterday. Like, no home. Well, no test. home tests. And not home. And actually, none of the cl and you know the drive-through tests as well that they would have at a lot of pharmacies not available here. There was a new emergency care, uh, not emergency room, urgent care clinic that had some, and that's just because they were new and nobody knew about them yet. Remember, I sent it to you. Yeah, yeah. Right down the block from there was an urgent care that's been around for a while that gets a good amount of traffic. No test. Ah. Completely unrelated. But the reason why is if your only chance at getting a test, go into a hospital. Oh, you've been admitted. By the way, my wife tried calling that place, and they said they would only give you a test if you had symptoms, meaning like you were you were sick, sick. Like if you were, you could demonstrate <laughs> that you were sick. Because she's like, oh, I have some symptoms. I'm like, no, but you look fine. Would really? Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hold on. Like, this, is, uh, this is stupid. But anything is a symptom now. It's like, all right, look, if you have a sore throat, you don't have a sore throat. You, you have congested, uh, <laughs> congested nasal cavity, tired, headache, chills, fever, feel cold, feel hot, stomach distress, liberal. irritated bunghole. And uh, <laughs> is being a pussy on there? <laughs> I said liberal. Headache. So. Do you list headache? I feel like a big pussy. Do I have COVID? Uh, there's a good chance. Mm. Oh, you're just Canadian. Positive. Not saying that it's not a serious <laughs> virus. I'm just saying that we are getting a fuller picture of the numbers. So, by right, the way, yeah. people will say this doesn't include children. This comes from two other studies that we wanted to cover on the show, but because of the rules on YouTube and everything, <laughs> mm -hmm. we said, well, you know what? It's not rigorous enough until we have more to add to yeah, it. Yeah. So there were two exclusively pediatric studies, to be clear. So now we've got the VA. And it comes on the heels of two pediatric studies. Uh, these were published in May. Found that 40 to 45% of all pediatric hospital admissions were cases where COVID was incidental. Meaning they were being admitted, and you can go to loudwithcrowder.com, right? We have the link in the description. You can go read the sources. That means that they were being admitted for something else like cancer or a psychiatric episode, which by the way, these have increased because of quarantine, yeah. isolation. Mm -hmm. People aren't going to school. And they happen to test positive for COVID. That's, again, 40 to 45 percent. Wow. COVID was incidental. They didn't even go because of COVID or have symptoms. That's insane. Everyone gets a COVID test if you're yeah. admitted right now in the hospital. Are you saying locking kids up and making them wear masks and scaring them is somehow hurting them psychologically? No. Well, I don't know. That we should ask sense. Kim Kardashian in her Met Gala outfit. I don't see a connection. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> what are you supposed to be, uh, Kim? The American economy. No. Oh. Also, the last guy I dated, and the guy before him. And before him. <laughs> you got to think that, yeah, Robert Kardashian's just looking up from hell going, bah, I shouldn't have gotten OJ off. <laughs> well, I guess karma is a bitch. It's just uh, kind of it's you, ironic. I got out just in time. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, I thought it was sad when I started to get sick, but now I'm just glad. <laughs> now. Count your benefits. blessings instead of sheep, Satan. Like hey, he married a guy hey, who calls no. himself Jesus. Jesus. <laughs> no singing. I still don't even know what I, I don't know what that I means. Know what that means. <laughs> I've met him, and I only met him so that he could say bye. 
<laughs> so oh, uh, family's terrible. It's really. <laughs> Uh, the California here. We'll go to this. The California recall election today. Oh yes, or, today. As is uh, as it's known by the American Plumbers Association. Ka-ching. So, <laughs> what? I don't get that one. Pipes going out. Oh, ah, pipes breaking. All right, there we oh, go. Sorry, uh, <laughs> Mario. Fortification. I'm, I'm picking little, it up. Little, a little too highbrow. I'm a little slow. I'm sorry. A little too highbrow. Let's go back to joking about Kardashians ah, dating people of color. Yeah, that's not obvious. Good I, made it. I don't find that humorous. Neither do I. <laughs> There's nothing funny about the Kardashians. No. Or interracial relationships. It's, or well, There's nothing wrong with that. Of course, of course there's nothing wrong with it. That's why there's nothing funny about it. I know. That's why I'm not laughing. It's beautiful. And brave. Always. Mm. I don't know how to get out of this one. Because <laughs> so, I actually don't. genuine. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, it's like I'm not, how do I get out? <laughs> I don't care who they date. Uh, no, of course not. Oh. I just, you know, maybe they're crazy. <laughs> The, the young ones. You know, actually, I got so much flack from the actual... I, this is where I found out that white supremacists were a thing. Actual neo-Nazis. Yeah. Back when they were known as what they were. Yeah. When I, sa- I tweeted out maybe years ago, I said, you know, if my, if my daughter brought home... And this is before I had children. So if my daughter brought home uh, a black man from church, I'd certainly be happier than if she brought home a white man from the dive bar. And they're like, oh my gosh, I can't believe this cuck. And I was like, what? What? Hold on a what? second. Uh. Oh, yeah. No, no. It's just, this is the falling down. I'm nothing like you. Yeah. And then they tried to, they realized that I wasn't Jewish. A lot of white neo Nazis thought I was Jewish, so they started yeah. sending anti Semitic things. Then they realized that I wasn't Jewish. They started like uh, photoshopping swastikas on me to try and say that I hated oh. Jews. And then the professor picked that up. And, you know, and then it got picked up by professors, and they and we refused picked up the to professor. retract it. And yeah. the schools never reprimanded professors uh, because there's know. no accountability for the left. And Twitter still let those posts up. Photoshops sh- with fake quotes and swastikas with horribly racist can quotes. I see, can I see you should have explained nothing? to them, like, listen. No, nothing? Okay, there we go. You should have just told them, look, Make if up. they were both up. in church, I would clearly have gone with the white right. guy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, not a, I'm not an insane person. Jeez. Are you going to tell me kid. nobody went to that? Come on. I want to see some of, of, I wanna see some of no, me and my grandkid. Come on, I don't want to. Of course it's a joke. What, you get to have a tan all the time and I got to deal with this porcelain skin? <laughs> this burning toilet skin? It's pretty nice. <laughs> you got to admit, any racial is the way to go because you just get your tan all year. Well, That's you got to admit that, uh, I will say, of and having just had two white babies, white babies aren't the cutest. No, no, sadly, no. no. Like Asian babies. Are oh, they're the best. Like Bill's, Bill's oh, little yeah. boy, half Asian, lawyer Bill Richmond, adorable. Yeah. When Good I kid. first saw... Magnus, I went. Oh. Well, he, he <laughs> just had a little bit I of a rough day. He, I mean, come on. He looked like a he looked like Satan in the crack desert and Passion of the Christ in the crowd. <laughs> <laughs> I I've never wanted to like babies. No, no. Like, it's like, do you want to hold my kid? And I'm like, no, I don't want to. I don't know. Yeah, I just I, don't want to. Dave, never I don't want to hurt me. it. Never mind. All right. See, I don't. I just want to hold my You're kid. Not I say, Can I drop it? Then no. Yeah. So I, um, the California recall is happening today for yeah. people who are watching. You may be watching this tomorrow, so I don't know this is happening in the morning. It is 10.55 a.m. Eastern. Um, and let's give some updates here. We have to be really, really, really clear. Very clear. That uh, this is a hard show today. It really this, is. This, I'm just trying to find just... Just it's all over. over. All right, let me just show the clip first. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So yesterday, some voters that so that you don't have to take my word for it. <laughs> take a look. It's in the clip. Uh, El Camino Real Charter High School. El Camino. Real. Nice. Real. What's spelled real? It's super, El super Camino. That should be the you know that like oh it's not just real. Yes. You're such an. Aff- <laughs> this is America, Gerald. <laughs> yeah. The school is a car truck. He's a little slow because he had a late night at the Met Gala. Yeah, it's real. real. Now, that was the name of the guy who served you uh, who served you crab cakes on oh. the tin with a double mask. That was Raul. Gasping for breath. <laughs> All right. It's so. El Camino Real Charter High School. Uh, they were told, and this is a report from not me, <laughs> that there were issues with the ballots. People tell us they showed up to vote this morning in the special California governor recall election and were told that computers showed they had already cast their ballots. So womp, womp. what? Staffers, Must they say, were show. apologetic and <laughs> helpful, but those voters we talked to are extremely concerned, suspicious, and wanting answers. Hmm. So wait a second. They, they were told that they already voted. So 
So it's going to be the most secure uh, recall in uh, election history? Yeah. Yes. Fortified. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Mm-hmm. I'm talking about. Safe and secure. Just yep. to make sure that we're all on the same page. Safe mm-hmm. yep. and secure. Do, 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 do. <laughs> Break that pipe. Then Very get nice. the suitcase. Who knows what? Oh, okay. On... <laughs> <laughs> Nice. Mushrooms with feet. <laughs> uh, on that same note, Ashley Babbitt allegedly received, oh. allegedly, 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 yeah, three ballots at her former address. Huh. That's weird. One for her. Strange. The photo was tweeted by the Twitter account for Ashley uh, that raises money, by the way, for Ashley and her family's legal yeah. fund. For people who don't remember, Ashley Babbitt is the lady who was shot in. Uh, yeah. The only person the to die on January sixth uh, during the insurrection. Yeah. Yeah, or as a Capitol Police uh, refer to it in the, the Congressional Democrats, mighty good shooting. Unbelievable. Mm-hmm. Pew, pew. Justified, that's what they call it. Yeah. And just to be clear, just so I just want to be very, very clear, there has never, ever been any instances recorded of fraud in any election ever in the history of the mm-hmm, United mm-hmm. States of America. It has yeah. never happened. And so I assume that these reports that you've seen from multiple different news outlets and receipts, of course, should not be seen with your own eyes. All sources available at ladderwithcutter.com. And there is no proof that there has ever been, and no, not even just elections. The government is beyond reproach. There's nothing yeah. corrupt. They're you perfect. know, people say power corrupts. You know what? I think investigative reporting corrupts. How about that? That's what I say. Mm-hmm. What, why, why are you so busy investigating other people's business, caring yeah. about legitimacy? What are you hiding? Yeah. Why are you so nosy? Yeah. Sunshine is poison. It's not a disinfectant. What skeleton right. ballots are in your yeah. closet? Mm-hmm. The you best things happen it, in then. the shadows. Come on. So, well, just Kennedy be- was elected not by the mafia. Yes. And he was shot by Oswald. And of course, no bootlegging. So <laughs> outside of that it, point... Separate issue, Janine Guerrero. Am I saying that right there, Gerald? Guerrero. Janine Guerrero. I don't care. I don't think you have to gurgle. Last Eddie? name sounds like a pitcher. Eddie's sister. On CNN <laughs> was talking about, of course, Larry Elder is running against Gavin Newsom. Larry right, Elder right. is a Republican candidate. We're going to have an interview from the archives here in just a few minutes. And it's fascinating to go back and see what he was saying Yeah. just b- before this. I, I, he was kind of called on running for governor. Yeah, yeah, it seems like. It wasn't a long-term plan, to be really clear. <laughs> yeah. Um, Janine Guerrero on CNN, of course, referred to the black candidate who was pelted with eggs yeah. by a Gavin Newsom supporter in a gorilla costume. Yeah. You would think if you're looking, look, white, if, by the way, if white. this were on yep. the back of a children's menu, let's say at IHOP and it would say like, okay, it would show you, right. Uh, it would show you the gorilla costume, throwing eggs at a black man. And then it would show you just the black man, and it would ask you to identify the differences, and one of them is which one's a white supremacist. Well, CNN would fail the back of the IHOP menu because, uh, well, here you go. He has been able to reach the, the minority of voters in California who embrace his, his white supremacist worldview. Um, and you know, he's, uh, he's co-opted this line by my fellow columnist uh, from, from the headline, you know, calling him the black face of white supremacy, but he refuses to engage with the actual substance of our reporting, you know, the idea that he, his, I, his um, views were shaped by a, a well-known white supremacist named Jared Taylor, who... Wait, so hold on a second. She just said black face of white supremacy. So she's a stupid person. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just had an yes. aneurysm. Correct. He is I the black right. face My of white supremacy. Just think about that. Let's what? Just think about think about what she just said. She had, he he of course well he these persons they've they've infected him and so he must be a white supremacist even though he's still black. I thought that that was an oxy. I feel that same way every time I go to Costco and I see a bag that says jumbo shrimp. <laughs> <laughs> what? You're like what? This is the most obviously terrible attack to throw at him because it's the it's most weak. Idiot. Well, it's idiotic, right? Like it's it's stupid. Like calling a black person a white supremacist. Simply because you don't like their policies, like it's worse than what we saw with uh, with Ben Carson doing? calling him like a, an Uncle Tom and all those different things that we saw. Right. with some of the the representatives in Kentucky as well. It's like, what do you what do you say? Because it wasn't what enough. Look, is this? this is the only play that the left has. Of That's course, a good point. people don't understand this, and we'll go to Larry Elder and Arca. So you will see these attacks were being used at him just when he was a talk radio host and yeah. a guy who was yeah. gaining an audience. People were listening to him. They say Uncle Tom. 
right? They think that'll work. First off, they say, black people, you vote Democrat. And they kind of go with that for a while, right? Then black people say, hey, we think that you're taking us for granted a little bit. And they go, oh, anyone who's a black Republican, Uncle Tom. And then when that doesn't work, they don't say, oh, you know what? Donald Trump got, is, got a record number of black people, Latino people, a surprising number, yeah. Yeah. really caught us off guard outside of six major cities. They don't say, hey, maybe they go, oh, Uncle Tom isn't uh, uh, white supremacist. And there's no one in their entourage <laughs> to just go, um, are, you talking, are you talking about the guy next to Larry Elder? <laughs> it's just lazy, though, at this point. Yeah. It really is. But because they're like, white supremacist, white supremacist. This guy's black. I don't know, white supremacist. I guess also that's the only thing we got. I don't Did, I don't did you see the, the the reporting, though, from the Los Angeles Times as well? They, so when we covered that story about the eggs being thrown, it's like, oh, Larry Elder cut short his uh, his press of, or his uh, campaign event because of uh, unrest. And then the next one was something about the same thing, the headline, and it showed Larry Elder with his hand on a white woman's yeah. face as though he slapped her. Was like well, altercation. I, will, I, look, altercation. I will say I'm a fan of Larry Elder, but hands off our white women. Yeah, he played, he played the video, and it was like they were giving each other a hug yeah. and welcome. And well, like, she even like, oh, came out I'd later and said it. Too. Yeah, I'd be of sound mind to not run this archive interview with you, kind person of color, because you. <laughs> Forget your role. Don't be going around slapping white women. Don't slap any women, but especially white women. Did you just look at a white woman cross? <laughs> Let's have a fake so trial. I fake bet trial. you sold your soul at a crossroads between slapping white women. So He should have slapped the gorilla mask right yes, off. He yeah. Yes, To reveal right a off. white woman yes. and then slap a white woman. Exactly. Yeah. Should have done both. <laughs> Double like slaps. <laughs> One for each. Yeah. Yeah, I would have gotten away with it if it wasn't for you meddling, stupid yeah, white Mr. bitches. <laughs> that's it. Everything. That's how they play duck, duck, goose. Just yeah. white supremacist, white supremacist, white supremacist. All right. Oh, it is. It's the same. They use this against Larry Elder. Unbelievable. And they use it against Ben Carson. And by and by the way, if you're watching right now, smash that like button to show Larry Elder some of your support right now because we want him to obviously do well in uh, California, where of course uh, elections. And just, I mean, there's, it, it, it's California. Secure. It's California. It's Fair. the Golden State standard. It is. Yeah. Yes, it is. We'll let you make your own influence. You know, just avoid the piles of human shit. Yes, the Golden <laughs> State that humans. smells of the golden shower. So, <laughs> sir, you filled this ballot out with your own feces. That's <laughs> yeah. not going to scan. This is a place where you don't have to disclose that you have AIDS when you have sex with a stranger. It actually went up for a vote. I thought like, oh, this is one of those absurd laws like they used to have in Georgia where you can't wear a hat that scares yeah. children on Sunday after two o'clock, but yeah. only every third Sunday. Like absurd rules that still exist on the books. Yeah, yeah. No, this was relatively recent. Yeah. People asked the question like, hey, if I have an AIDS infected load, should I have to let somebody know before I have sex with them? They're like, like, no, I'm but you need to wear a mask. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you need to have a vaccine passport. Yes. This is. <laughs> Think about that for a second. <laughs> what a stupid word. If George Michael were still alive, <laughs> he would walk out of the porta potty after having banged strangers with reckless abandon, yeah. and it wouldn't be a problem unless he didn't have a neck gator. It's true. <laughs> How big, is this, how big is this porta potty? How many strangers? <laughs> he probably did have a turtleneck, though. Yes, he just rolled it up. <laughs> That's really uh, for disguise. I'm just saying, like you got to have a turtleneck. So George Michael's banging people true. in porta potties. Now we have Newsom's. Uh, what's next? This is my question. What's next? If it doesn't, will they think? And you can comment below. Do you think that the left will think that the calling Larry Elder a white supremacist worked if yes. Larry Elder doesn't win? Do you think they'll be like, oh, oh no. nailed it? Oh, they're yeah. high fiving right now. They're like, yes, that's so good. The black face of white supremacy. Well, I, I've <laughs> seen a lot of people post about it. I mean, people buy it. That's the problem is like I we're see. laughing at it because it's absurd. But there's plenty of people that are like, yeah, he is. They're right. Yeah. I think they yeah. stole that, though. I think I saw that on the Babylon Bee like a year ago. Like, there's no way this will happen. That's where they're pulling all their <laughs> plans oh, from. He, I can't believe. Yeah, I can't believe that anybody would assume that that wouldn't have happened. Yeah. I'm surprised it didn't happen this <laughs> sooner. I just, I, you know, it's. Be, I don't know what we do. I don't know what we do as a comedy show anymore. I don't know what <laughs> we do when the left is accusing Larry Elder of being the black. They didn't just say, well, he has deeply hidden right, self-loathing, yeah. you know, uh, no. tendencies. They said the black face of white supremacy. I'm not sure. Where also, do you go from there? Just how about just framing it in a way that's not retarded? <laughs> I mean, if you're trying to subvert, we're, we're really are in an Orwellian time where it's yeah. double think, and they're they're trying to change language. It's like, oh, hold a second. I thought white I thought white supremacy meant that 
you hated, you thought white, that black people were inferior. Like, no, 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 it doesn't mean that. But I thought white supremacy was, no, 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 black, uh, black, there are just as many black people who are, uh, white people who are white supremacists. Really? How many? Just the one. <laughs> well, according to the meetings I go to, it's just that we're, we think we're a little better. Oh. Hmm. Mm. You're not in the middle? Not in the middle better, average. just more better. Yeah, more, oh, we're more yeah. equal. Yes. By the way, I, I thought this was already taken care of with Barack Obama and black supremacist Louis Farrakhan and sitting yeah. under his teaching for years. Just because he, I thought oh, no, wait, Jer- uh, 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 he really said under Jeremiah advice. Wright. Oh, Jeremiah Wright, who was influenced by. Yes, Farrakhan. also also did all the, 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 yeah, yeah, the anti-Semitic. And, Sorry, I, are I, I, you I, saying, named, I misnamed the black supremacists. You mixed yes, up. You misnamed right. the black yeah. supremacists. Louis Farrakhan blames everything on the Jews. On the uh, Jews, yes. And then Jeremiah Wright is just a charlatan who humps the podium on stage. Is, is uh, Louis still there? Or is it Louis Jr. now? I, I don't know exactly. I uh, forget. I forget about the I, when I was in Times Square. I used to always try to grab their newspaper though, and they would not have it. Really? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> not happy about that. I'm like, oh yeah, I'll take that. Like, mm-mm. no, mm-mm. Mm-mm. that's not what? for you. I can't read it about that the news. Not for you. <laughs> <laughs> so now, a big part of Newsom's strategy, by the way, has been uh, appealing to the Latino vote. That's been pivotal. So this is again. Look at this. All of it is racially charged yeah. from the left right now. You have a black guy, Republican, who actually wants to improve the state. By the way, even Joe Biden, Elizabeth Warren, these people who went down and said, hey, you got to vote for Gavin Newsom. Larry Elder made a great point. He said, you know what they haven't said? They haven't said that Gavin Newsom has done a good job for California. <laughs> no, yeah, because no, they, they can't. can't. You know, Joe Biden said, you know, Newsom, as far as I know, he was just following the science, right? That's what he said. I was like, that's an endorsement? That's what you're doing, dude. That's the best and you he has. suck. I know your state's on fire. That's okay. But they had a maskless been, dinner at the beginning of this where everything was actually yeah. named uh, after Orwellian things. And the only place where plates are more expensive than the Met Gala. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I've eaten The once. French laundry or whatever French it was called. Oh, good for you. Everyone clap yeah. for Gerald. He wants oh. us to know. He ate what kind of job, wine did you have, job. you big fruit? <laughs> I had scotch and cigars afterwards. Scotch and cigars afterwards. <laughs> scotch and cigars afterwards. Did you? I, I did. Did you? Really? Did. Oh, did you? Yeah. No, we who didn't. Did, did you go with Newsome? I did not. <laughs> Was it a cuckold? <laughs> <laughs> with this, <Sorry>. with <laughs> Newsome in the entire state of California. So he's been trying to appeal to Latino vote. He's probably worried because 33% of the Latino vote went to Donald Trump in 2020. Ooh, that's big, yeah. that scared? shocked a lot of people, and I expect that to only get bigger as the left goes further le- uh, left. Oh, yeah. Again, because like I've said with black Americans, if you actually look at the individual polling on issues with Latinos, they are not expected to be a Democrat voter base. No. Uh, to give you an idea, this is no. how stupid and out of touch the left is. They were saying that when Mexico made, uh, they, they decriminalized abortion. Yeah. They're saying people from Texas who can't get an abortion, they're going to go, de- go de- they're going to have to go down and get it in Mexico. That's not how this works. They're, <laughs> they're simply considering maybe letting people out of prison who had abortions, and they're simply going to, okay, maybe look at some what you would consider far, far right, or they would consider moderate policies. You're not wow. going to get someone from Southern California to go down in the second trimester in Mexico yeah. and have them serve an abortion right up to a gringo. This is how out of touch <laughs> they are. Mexican people, Mexican Americans, <laughs> typically Catholic, very conservative, Big family. anti-abortion. Yeah. That's why it was monumental for the law to even move just an inch and you need to know what they actually did because they're not moving the way that you think they're moving. Wow. Plus, the Mexican abortion very different. It's just you, you stand behind a, a, a kicking donkey. <laughs> yes, Tijuana <laughs> is not known for them. Okay, yeah. I'm a doctor. Other just thing. stand over here. Yeah, I'm a, do- I mean, I'm a doctor and stand right next to the wall. That's yes, stucco right, right here. Basically, <laughs> welcome. Easy to. design choice. So, um, want a drink? If you remember, by the way, after Trump's success, even Barack Obama said that Hispanic evangelicals. Um, he was the one who, yeah. he he was the one who sort of acknowledged at least the first one I know of Barack Obama publicly to acknowledge that Hispanic evangelicals uh, actually helped get such a high proportion of the Latino votes or sorry Latinx Latinx votes. By go. the way, yeah. hey, go to Mexico, call someone Latinx, see how long it takes before you get your ass kicked by a gang of non-gang related Mexicans, but they will <laughs> form one just for you using the term Latinx. But here's sure. Barack Obama actually saying this: um, People were surprised about. Uh, a, a lot of Hispanic folks who voted for Trump. But there's a lot of evangelical Hispanics who, you know, the fact that Trump says racist things about Mexicans what? or puts uh, detainees, uh, you know, uh, uh, undocumented workers in cages. The they built the cages, Joe. Than the fact that, you know, he <laughs> uh, supports their views on 
you know, gay marriage or abortion. So this is definitely an uphill battle, look, yeah. for Newsom. And um, I believe we actually have some exclusive audio oh, of yeah, him, yeah. robocalls, trying to obtain in California. This is happening right now across California, yeah. uh, the, the Latinx vote. Hola, Latinx. Me llamo Gavin Newsomo. Lo siento de nuevo por French lavanderia. Rico es no bueno. No es bueno. El negro es blanco supremo. Can, can we just get another crackhead to steal some ballots? That's my regular yeah. as I go to the Taco oh. Bell and order the blanco supremo. The blanco supremo. Hey, uh, blanco blanco supremo. If you say it that way, it doesn't sound so bad. Yeah. Blanco supremo. If you go and say, can you give me the white supremacist? They go, okay. I say, I'm sorry. El blanco supremo. I got you. I got you. There's a woman that tweeted Crayola because it said Negro. Because oh, she's I know. An idiot. It's hilarious. There's <laughs> multiple people that it do also that. Said they're, noir. they're so dumb. They're like, why would you write that. this on there? It's like, do you really think Crayola was like, let's slide in the slur? Yeah. I love how Crayola, like, they replied to and they were like, oh, well, this is actually Spanish. So. Oh, you know that the guy Crayola is just waiting. Yeah. Because he can't call that him that. auto reply <laughs> going. Yeah. Moron. Just wait until you see the red and yellow crayons. Oh, yeah, you're not going to like them. Oh, boy. <laughs> Racist Crayola. Well, I remember when I was a kid, I was in a carpool. <laughs> a big box of them. This is a true story. I was in a carpool as a kid, and there, uh, I was, I was trying to talk about uh, a black kid in her class. And I remember talking with this this mother at the carpool, thinking, uh, "Oh yeah, um, I'll use a different name. Oh yeah, Andrew." Um, the and I stopped. I might have been eight or nine, and I thought, "I can't say black." Yeah. Right. I thought black is offensive, and so I said, uh, "The." Um, the, the the Negro kid at school, I thought that was because also keep in mind that we're half French, half English, right? right so the yeah. romance language is like we're talking about here with Crayola. Yeah. So I, I stopped myself and she turned back and said, don't you ever say that. I was like, ah, <laughs> Your mom's black, like black. <laughs> of course, it, I just don't know what to say anymore. <laughs> it does sound like you're having, you're having supper in 1950s Montgomery, <laughs> yeah. Alabama. <laughs> <laughs> and I tell you back there, that Negro boy, yeah, yeah, top off that man, Julio Pasio. So that yeah. Negro boy back there. Uh, me and my friend will be sitting at the lunch counter. He will be sitting wherever you put him. He will be sitting Ouch. wherever he pleases, so long as it is not <laughs> near my aha placement and, of course, my Crayolas. Yes. Do it's you French. Have, uh, it's French. Crayolas for my... <laughs> Oh, they've changed this that. This is a noir. different person. Yeah, well, that's noir, but but again, we separate. They used so negre was the term ne for was well, negre is a term for black, but that was the yeah. term for black people, and noir was a color, so it was two different so words. They put it both on there. Whereas it. opposed well, to Spanish. in the United States, black is the same word, right? Yeah, yeah. So they went the other way, where they had a word for black people, they have a word for the black color. And then only relatively recently did they change. So it's, 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 it's the point is, it's all silly. Look, yeah, if state. you're not racist, who cares? That's it. <laughs> yeah. Well, it, Enjoy your Crayolas. Fortunately, Matt Damon's just come out and his daughter has told him that the N-word is something that he shouldn't He's probably He's going to throw out all the really? black. Yeah. Uh, oh, no. He that removes know. half his catalog of jokes. He didn't yeah. know. The other half is short guy humor. That's how he was trying to tell her that he wasn't going to vote for Newsom. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So uh, he preferred, <laughs> and I, I'm, we're gonna we have to get to Larry Elder here. We don't have we don't have a bunch of time. But uh, before that, speaking of people of color, yeah. Oh, yeah. that's the term we're supposed to use now. Yeah, black's a shade. Anyway, <laughs> Bill Cosby um, canceled. Oh. What? what canceled what? his comedy tour? Dang um, it! Oh, suddenly, man. he had a comedy tour. That was going to happen. I, I want to make sure. Do I, I get a right. refund for this? Uh, I know. Due I just to a reversal. Four dollars on tickets. Well, yeah. yeah so <laughs> there was going to be a comedy tour due to the reversal of sexual assault. Him being let loose. Huh. So I believe we have a, a, a montage of that first. This was a unwanted three-year vacation that Mr. Cosby never asked for. But <laughs> if Mr. Cosby conviction being overturned, it's for the world and all Americans. Do you hear that world by the judicial <laughs> that he never this asked for, like every one of his victims? Thing. This is for all the people who have Because I write people of different colors and shades. Regardless of race, color, or creed. Because I, I met them in there. These people can't get lawyers. And so I write them too. My prison. Because I knew they could have sued me, so I said, hey, you want to make some toilet ride? Blah. This is Bill Cosby. He is such. <laughs> he didn't just rape a few people. Um, he raped many. A small thing. And by the way, he his people said that it was canceled because uh, they didn't want him to say something that could be used against him in his unresolved legal matters. <laughs> so, yeah, that's oh, a concern. Yeah. Turns out 
the some of the people that I raped when I was inside the slammer actually can get some lawyers to give them pro bono. And I did the road that did that for all the people. <laughs> Everybody <laughs> did it in there. They were the king, you see, when you did it. <laughs> what did it there. And the good thing is because I was in California, no idea. If this joke is accurate, I do not know where I was detained. <laughs> but I did not have to disclose what I call my Magic Johnson disease. <laughs> so, uh, to actually, though, this is this is everywhere in the news. Surprising, yeah. he's let out. And then he has a tour, which was big. Right. Yeah, then yeah. he cancels the tour. Dang and then the it. reason for canceling the tour is very different. So we actually have um, here to help us understand this. We're going to go on the ground to the last remaining Bill Cosby apologist. All right. Okay. The last remaining Bill Cosby uh, apologist we yeah, have on the so, ground. Uh, are you there? Can you hear me, sir? What? Wait, what's up? Uh, oh, hey, what's up, yeah, Steven? What's We're just hey, what's up, bud? Wow. What are you doing? I'm eating pudding? Uh, well, I'm just reporting live on Bill Cosby like you've asked. Well, you know, you're in... Uh, He's, what? You're supposed mm. to be on the ground. You're in... This is correspondent. You're in third chair. Dave, Dave what are you doing? Uh, why are you wearing a Cosby sweater? Uh, it's not. It's a Coos Van Dienaker. Okay. Why are you wearing th that? that? Uh, well, it's a little chilly in here. Huh. It's a Cosby sweater, just to be clear. It's a style that Bill Cosby might wear. Sure. I don't sure. like it. That's, I don't like it at all. Mm -mm. I think I like you know, it. I don't care. I'm bringing this style back now that Bill Cosby has been found innocent. Well, hold on. Okay. He wasn't. Let's no, be no, clear no, about no, this. Bill Cosby, that. he was not found. He was not found innocent. He was let out on a technicality. Yeah, like they're just going to let a convicted rapist out of prison. Uh, it, that's exactly. That is exactly yeah, what they did. Sorry. No. So. He sexually assaulted like dozens of women. Dave. Yeah. He, allegedly. So you hold on. So I want to make sure that this. I want to make sure we have this right. Gerald, are you following this? I, I'm you trying. think that Bill Cosby is innocent? <laughs> are any of us truly innocent? Yes, of rape. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah all of us oh, here okay. are innocent oh, of. Yeah, yeah. All, yeah. no one yeah. here is is. We're all innocent of rape, yeah. Dave. All right. Okay. So maybe of rape. Is anybody here uh, guilty of raising a generation? Hey, is anybody here guilty of being America's dad? Anybody? Anybody show hands. I mean, that's pretty good. That's Thank a good point. Yeah. yeah, exactly. It's a good point. Thank you. Bill Cosby. A, Bill Cosby is a terrible man. Terribly funny. No. Yeah, okay. I don't think. I don't. I don't really. I'm not very that. I'm not fond of about what's going what's, on. what's happening no, here. It's, what, okay. Oh, what's the, what's that, Dave? Huh? This? Yeah. What is that? This this beauty? Yeah. This is my good luck football. It's uh, signed by O.J. Simpson. I think I know where this is going. Nope. Actually, it was signed by Mark Furman, but he did use O.J.'s blood. Oh, my God. Okay. How did he get that? That doesn't, even, that doesn't even look like an autograph. How did he get that? Uh, it wasn't. It was a racial slur, but it's smeared over time. But All right. Come on. E easy, easy on Mark Furman. He watches fervently. All right. This has been fan. our on-the-ground uh, Bill Cosby last remaining uh, uh, apologist correspondent. All right, so uh, before we have this, uh, do we know when this was recorded? It was like, a f was it a few months ago? Or was uh, it 2015. This oh, was, was a while ago. This oh, was wow. recorded in 2015. 2015, yeah. That's a while ago. Oh, so this would, and we never know. ran this? We never ran it. It was, uh, I was actually going through some of our archives and it was unlisted. Like it That's never got really insane. So. Huh. Yeah. That was back in, uh, back in the old days. Back in the old days. Honestly, I can't tell you why uh, it didn't end up being released. Hmm. Um, we've never actually done that with, with interviews. Uh, maybe we have now with other interviews that I didn't even know. What sometimes does happen, though, is someone has to pre-tape an interview, yeah. and then news yeah. breaks, and we get a guest. And then you uh, that's what I assumed it was. It was something like that. You just forget we, about it. Yeah. Yeah, but you guys, studio. I maybe you didn't release time. it because it was wrongfully accused <gasps> and in prison. Uh, yeah, well, that could be it. Or it could just be that something happened <laughs> that points, was newsworthy. Though. Right. This is the old Michigan studio? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, okay. Wow. So this is back when it be. used to be in my den, and we were going through the archives. They found this and said, "You know what? You should probably run this just because it's very rare that you get to see. This has never been aired before. That you get to see a glimpse into someone who, um, 
this is how he was treating it back when he really had nothing to gain from yeah. my show at yeah. this point. Right? He didn't need to it do very it. Small he had been a friend the of the show. It was a very small show. And you can see that he is exactly the same person. And right now the attack, of course, this is beyond him being the black face of white supremacy, <laughs> is that uh, he's trying to become another Trump, that he's just pandering for votes. Well, you know what? Let's go back into the archives here. Watch this Larry Elder interview. And you tell me, and then, of course, uh, the part that we can't show on YouTube is going to be Mug Club only, and we'll take your chat after. You tell me if he's pandering for votes or if he's always been the same old Larry Elder. So glad to have this next guest with me. And I know I say that a lot, but this is this is true because <laughs> I was raised in a country where we didn't get AM radio. We didn't get any kind of political discourse. And it's funny, he can tell me about it. I used to watch his program. I had no idea, no background on him, but I remember looking to my dad as a young teenager saying, I think that guy's a conservative, or at the very least, a reasonable human being. LarryElder.com. He has a book, uh, Dear Father, Dear Son. Out. Larry Elder, thanks for being with us. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. <laughs> no, I, I am so glad to have you. You know, it's funny. We have a I mean, we have a lot of, we have an eclectic mix of guests, right? We don't typically just do the, the AM radio stuff that everyone else does. We have weird people on. Right. But I, I, I don't get <laughs> starstruck by people I have on who are just on cable news because we didn't have it. But your show, I used to, was, now was it a, a morning or a, a, a daytime show? Well, I had uh, I had a couple of TV shows. One was called Moral Court, and one was called The Larry Elder Show. Okay. You're probably thinking about The Larry Elder Show. That was on for a bit. But I've done radio now for 20 years. Yes. Well, I know, and I hate to talk about something that used to do, but for me, that was the only thing I had access to <laughs> in Canada. Right. You're talking about essentially a government-monopolized media with the CBC and Radio Canada. And it, right. it's, it's funny. So I just remember watching as a kid. I, had no, I didn't know what a Republican was. You and John Stossel. And I sat right. there, and I said... I, I just like what these guys have to say. Get this Barbara Walters off because it came on after tea. <laughs> and I think you were a guest on Stossel, if I'm not mistaken. I was. Uh, and Stossel and I are both libertarians. Yeah. This is true. Yeah. And I th that's how I was introduced to you because we used to have TGIF, Sabrina the Teenage Witch, Boy Meets World, and then 2020 came on. And John Stossel would come on with his sort of smug, give me a break, you know, his whole segment. Right. And, uh, and that's where I saw you. And I just said, I, I had no idea why I was so drawn to you guys. Um, you know, I, I, I've known Stossel for a long time. And people often ask me, Stephen, how I became a libertarian. It was kind of a, a long process, mostly my, me being exposed to economics. But Stossel found some book, uh, a magazine called The Reason Magazine, on, on right. a metro that somebody had just left. And he picked it up, started reading it, and it was all libertarian, and that's what got him interest, interested in libertarianism. So I told him if he had missed that bus, then he would he would still be a card carrying Democrat, and apparently he said apparently so. Well, you know, it's funny. I actually subscribed to Reason Magazine through one of those guys who sold subscriptions. Mm -hmm. You know, he had the little stick door to door. He had been shot in the face eight times, and um, <laughs> right. And it was cool. I found out. I remember I was so gullible. I was young. I was like, oh, what do you have that's political? And I subscribed to Reason Magazine, and I remember um, I saw him at a CVS. Uh, or well, uh, it wasn't a CVS. It was a different pharmacy that uh, people won't understand the name. So I'm saying CVS for reference. I was seeing him there and finding out that it was a complete sham, and I was upset. But I did have my Reason subscription, and I read read that thing religiously for two years. Um, so it's funny. Right. So you say libertarian, and I think that's really right. interesting this week because I feel like you and Stossel have been incredibly consistent. Um, socially, you lean more liberal. I don't want to misrepresent right. you. So what mm -hmm. what is your point of view then? on this Supreme Court, the decisions last week? Because I would imagine for a libertarian, it's much more than the reductive reasoning of love versus hate. It, it is. And, and in California, we've had the um, issue of same-sex marriage on the ballot twice. And both times, I voted in favor of it. Mm -hmm. And both times, my fellow Californian voted against it. And I'm okay with that because I thought that we had a country where we had the concept of federalism. Uh, Article 1, Section 8 of the Constitution outlines the duties and obligations of the federal government. The Ninth and Tenth Amendments say anything the federal government can't do uh, are reserved to the people and to the states. And I think marriage and abortion are issues that should be decided on a state-by-state -state basis. So while I don't I don't mind the idea that a state has accepted same-sex marriage. In fact, I voted for it, as I said. Mm -hmm. I really disliked the way it was done, ramming it down the throats of all 50 states when 13 or 14 of them didn't want it. Same thing they did with abortion. And they were winning the argument on the ground, as they were with abortion. In 1973, when uh, Roe v. Wade was handed down, abortion was available to 70 percent of the nation's population. Similarly, same-sex marriage is legal in about 35, 36 states before this. And in the other 14, many of them had something called civil unions. So I don't see any reason why this had to be shoved down the throats of the rest of the country. Well, I will ask you this as someone who is, I'm trying to think, uh, black, African-American, gentleman of color, what should I say here to make sure you don't call the ACLU? 
<laughs> well, I never use the term African dash American. I think it's a stupid, demeaning term that was essentially rammed down the throats of newspapers by Jesse Jackson. I'm an American who happens to be black. That's not what I call myself. So colored gentlemen, we'll go with that. That's okay. Because <laughs> All right. I never understood. Person of color. Yes. American of color. And what's funny is colored is racist. People of color right. is now correct. I can't keep track right. of the rules. And it, don't Every, get me everything right. changes. When I when I was a kid, it was Negro, and then it was Afro American. Then all of a sudden, uh, African American. And I guess that's where it is right now. And if you notice, when newspapers use the term African American, the next sentence they'll say black, and then they'll go back to African. Yeah, I know they can't they gotta cover their bases. <laughs> it's, and then it's it's worse in French Canadian because you know it's noir is black. It's a color. Negre is Negro. So and then they switch between French and English. You have to be careful with that because you can use some French words in English, but if you just say negre, people wait. What? What, what did you just say? So you have to be careful. And um, again, it's just it's funny that this political correctness people don't understand what's politically correct here is actually offensive in another country, and it, it's but, tough to but keep. But track. also, it's weird on another level. I, I've seen police, for example, describe an assailant as being quote an African American. How do you know he wasn't from Haiti? How do you know he wasn't from Nigeria? Right. I got a buddy who uh, went up to Canada with a, with a son, and his son said, "Dad, there aren't very many uh, many black people here in Canada." And he said, "Well, there are some." So they go driving, they go to a, a, a gas station, and the son who's ten years Years old says, Dad, there's an African American. Well, how do you know he's from uh, Af America? He's Canadian, African American, isn't he? Right. He's Haitian Canadian. Yeah. Well, yeah, we it's have not. that. We have a huge Haitian population, funnily enough, in Quebec, which is a bastion of multiculturalism. And they, cr we talked about these laws a lot. They tried to purify the province, pure land, it's called, for pure French European blood. It's, 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 it's horrible. It's incredibly racist. And then they had a huge Haitian immigration. Because, I mean, they speak French. And uh, French Canadians are much more racist than Americans, so it's funny to see them flip out now. Um, <laughs> so, no, it's, it's funny that you say that, and uh, I'm, I'm glad to hear that uh, we're not going to be stepping on any cultural landmines. Um, you right. said that you don't want to see this given to the courts because you think people should vote on it. Obviously, liberals right. and even some libertarians say you don't get to vote. Uh, right. You don't get to vote on human rights or civil rights and compare it to the plight of black Americans. What do you say to that? Mm -hmm. I don't think the comparison is well taken. Uh, four members of the Supreme Court uh, agree with me that uh, this should be handled on a state-by-state on -state basis uh, and that sexual orientation is not the same thing as race. Um, in, before 1969, it was illegal for blacks and whites to marry uh, in, in some parts of this country, mostly in the South. Uh, this has nothing to do with, with race. It has everything to do with people's behavior and orientation. And I can at least understand the argument that the traditional sex, traditional proponents of marriage argue, which is that uh, a marriage is the possibility of having children or having children, and we have to provide the kinds of role models that teach men how to be men and women how to be women. Again, I don't buy that reasoning, but that is at least a straight-faced reasoning that a lot of people feel, and the courts ought to have respected. And if you don't like living in that particular state, you can move to another state. If your state is one of these states that does not support same-sex marriage, you can decide as a business person, you can decide as a tourist not to go to that state. You can punish that state in that way, and maybe that state will then rethink its assumptions. But to sure. cram it down the throats of the American people by arguing it's the same thing as the civil rights uh, of, of the 1950s as to blacks. To me, it's unfair and not well taken. And one of the nieces of MLK is named Avita King. She's a pastor, and mm -hmm. she very much resents the comparison. Yeah, I can imagine. I always talk about that. You know, it's tough for me because obviously I'm not black, but I say I, I, if I were black, I'd... Again, it's something you're born... Uh, you're born black, and you're born people... You know, people say gay... I've talked about that, and I don't want to. I don't want to open that box right now. Um, I think people don't choose their sexual desires, but everyone has choices over their sexual actions. It's just like I have a choice right. to cheat on my wife. Not saying you, you, you know, you're watching the love boat and you go, "Hmm, Skipper looks great. I think I'm going to go for him today." <laughs> right. What I am saying is, everyone chooses to act on their sexual actions. So. There is no choice in being black, despite what the left might say. I've seen them say that you're not black enough, so I guess it is a, a, a choice on how you yeah, act. Yeah, people, people claim I made a choice to be white, but uh, I don't see it. Every morning I, I get up in the mirror and I go, ah! <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like the old cartoon where you jump out of your skin, and then hopefully right. you can just jump into a new one. I go, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm white now. I'm transracial. Here's my point. Actually, now we're, we're off on the, the rabbit trail. The transracial thing. I've talked about this before. I want you to tell me if you think I'm absolutely out of line here. Um, the transgender movement, that's where I think there is a slippery slope. The fundamental interchangeability of genders. With the same-sex marriage, I think it applies. You have to apply that reasoning to transgenderism, transsexualism, whatever you want to call it. But I do think it's actually much more reasonable. I'm not saying either is reasonable. To change your race than your sex. Because think about this for a second. Just one second. Come with me here. Bruce right. Jenner <laughs> had to go through severe hormone replacement therapy. 
uh, all kinds, I mean, a surgery where you essentially amputate your penis and testicles to become a woman. It still very much looks like a man in a dress. Anyone will be able to point it out. Rachel Dalzal slapped on a spray <laughs> tan and a sideshow bob, a fake Good perm, and fooled the NAACP for what? A decade? I mean, so wouldn't it <laughs> seem as you're viewed by the public, that would show you that it's, um, it's obviously a much more physical issue. It, it looks as if you can uh, become somebody different uh, on, on a racial level easier than you can become someone different on a gender level because Rachel Dolezal basically said she felt black. Yeah. And so therefore she is black. So you can get up in the morning and feel Amish and become Amish. It's fantastic. It's, yeah. It's amazing. You, you know, what's interesting is the NAACP <laughs> gave her more support than they gave Clarence Thomas. Clarence Thomas was the second nominee, black nominee for the Supreme Court, and right. the NAACP did not support him. The uh, black magazine called Ebony, Stephen, probably the most widely circulated black magazine in the country, comes out once a month. I know. Why do you feel called, that you think I don't know because I'm white? I know about wanted, Ebony. Wanted, wanted to inform your fans <laughs> who might not, be, right. might not be as knowledgeable as you, Stephen. <laughs> anyway, every year they have something called the 100 uh, plus most influential black Americans. Yeah. And every year they omit Clarence Thomas, uh, Thomas Sowell and Walter Williams, three prominent black people, because they feel that they aren't black. And you ain't black. That is to say they have positions that are antithetical to the black community. But Rachel Dolezal, good to go. Explain that one to me, Stephen. Uh, I don't <laughs> think I can explain it to you. I just wanted to make the joke about her side so sideshow Bob perm. But, you know, it's funny, the Clarence <laughs> Thomas thing. <laughs> I was pretty young. And when I went back and, and, and read up on that so i was too young to fully understand it right i was going like okay to the best of my knowledge it was a joke about n like nether region hair and a coke can or something i'm going like this doesn't seem to be a national story and it, it just shows you that some things can get so hyped up in the moment and when someone comes in with a fresh point of view and just goes this is what everyone was up in arms about right. i think we're going to have right. that about nearly everything occurring these last few years I think you're right. What happened in the case of Clarence Thomas is that one of the women, women persons he worked with, her name was Anita Hill, said that he hit on her mm -hmm. and said, there's a pubic hair on my Coke, which was his boring, clumsy way of hitting on her. And for that reason, Clarence Thomas was perceived to be not qualified to be on the Supreme Court. Right. Scotty, beam me up. Meanwhile, <laughs> Al Sharpton has a show on MSNBC, and Al Sharpton is a race hustling person who became famous by lying about Tawana Brawley. He's $5 million light in taxes, got involved in the Crown Heights affair, uh, went to Ferguson and said that Darren Wilson should be arrested. And then, of course, Darren Wilson was exonerated. He's got a show on MSNBC. Donald Trump is fired. What world do I live in, Stephen? I, well, I don't know. I'm not a fan of, of uh, I think Al Sharpton and Donald Trump should have a hair war. <laughs> so it's it's changed. It's a changing world out there. Like Al, a little bit, yeah. Al Sharpton. Okay, I want to talk about that because I was talking with my producer here who's younger and he's more apolitical, um, mm -hmm. Gay Jared over here. And um, he's talked about this. Al Sharpton actually, when compared to my generation of race baiters, uh, like DeRay and Sean King, the people who've made their entire living online at daily costs or being funded by Soros. Um, Al Sharpton seems downright classy. Have you noticed it becoming even more aggressive with people my age? It's funny. I was just talking about that a moment ago on my show. Uh, the millennials have been now accused of being almost as racist as non-millennials, which is fascinating. Over on MSNBC, I heard a pundit just now say that because uh, Dylan Roof, apparently because of his age, is, a, I guess, technically a millennial, and it supposedly uh, pierces the myth that millennials are not racist. This guy uh, was a deviant. Uh, he couldn't even get a following. He has a racist manifesto, Stephen, where he complains he can't even get the Klan to join him. He wanted to start a race <laughs> war. And the whole point is that this guy could not get a following. He was angry. He couldn't even get the Klan to follow him. He kills nine people, and we're having a discussion about how much racism there is in America. We didn't have that discussion about Charlie Manson back in 69. Manson's goals were exactly the same. He wanted to start a race war. We wrote him off as a degenerate nut. He's got a, he's got a swastika tattooed on his forehead. He's a nut, and so is this roof guy. Why are we having this conversation about gun control, about the Confederate flag? Ridiculous. It is ridiculous. I did get a lot of flack, though, uh, just for saying, hey, listen, I ab absolutely, people have the right to run a f Confederate flag, let your freak flag fly any way you want, and Amazon and Walmart also have the right to not sell it if they choose not to. That's their right. It's not a right. First Amendment issue. And I said, me, personally, 
I'm not going to be pro Confederate flag. And I got so much flack for that. People saying, well, you know, it's about states' rights. You, this is something actually I would like your, your input on. And because maybe it's a blind spot for me. What I said, again, as an ignorant white guy, I said, well, states' rights don't supersede human rights. And as far as I'm concerned, slavery is a human right issue. The federal government had to abolish slavery. Am well, I off on of that? Course. No, 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 of course not. And, and if I were the, in the legislature in South Carolina, as I've said repeatedly, I would vote against the flag as well. But I would not assume that everybody who voted against me uh, was a bigot. It's interesting. We say that sure. not every Muslim is a terrorist, but apparently everybody who's a proponent of the Confederate flag is a bigot. Not fair. That's true. <laughs> it's not fair. Uh, it's not fair, but I do think I do think it's tough when I argue and I say, hey, I'm, I'm a conservative, you know, Republican, the party of Lincoln, the party that freed the slaves, and someone's going, oh, no, I hate the Confederacy! I'm like, damn it. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, my, my mom is from Huntsville, Alabama. My dad is from Georgia. Uh, and there are even some black people who think yep. of the Confederate flag as a symbol of history and a symbol of Southern pride. And there are a lot of white people who feel that way in good faith. So again, even though I would not vote for the flag, there are so many people that resent it, so many people that feel it's a symbol of racism, and so many businesses that would not relocate to my state because of the flag, I would vote against it for all sorts of reasons. But I would not assume that my lawmaker across the aisle who votes differently is doing so because of bigotry. That's a good point. That sounds incredibly sensible. You know, the arguments. <laughs> I, I don't know what you're doing. I don't know what I you're doing. I get lucky doing. every now and then. Yeah, every now and then. I was going to say. Every now and then. Yeah, I, they were wrong about you on Spin City. <laughs> I remember, now, did, you, did you make a cameo on Spin City? Did you actually... I did make a cameo on Spin City. I did one also on the D.L. Hughley show. Yeah. And a show called American Dreams. I am an actor. This is true. You are an actor. Did they treat you okay? Did you come on and they treated you like a piece of crap? I, 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 had, a, I had a cameo appearance on 24. Remember 24 yeah, with yeah, Peter yeah. Sutherland? And one of my buddies uh, produces it, so he got me a little cameo thing. And when I was there, uh, the production assistant says, uh, uh, so-and-so's friend is here to do his part. I said, I'm not so-and-so's friend. I am an actor. And she went, so-and-so's friend, the actor, is here. <laughs> well, if anyone does any research and finds out who so-and-so is, uh, he'll never produce in Hollywood again. So thanks for <laughs> that, Larry. Do they treat you well, though, in Spin City? Again, I was a youngster, so that's where, how I was introduced to you. They really did. Um, they knew that I was conservative. They knew that I probably had views that would make the ears explode of everybody else uh, on the set. But they were very polite to me. They also knew I was there only for a few minutes and I'd be getting the hell out. So they probably were able to be polite for a few minutes. Right. Yeah. I remember thinking it was a very funny storyline. And uh, and I thought you were a good sport at going in and doing it. You know, I've seen Rush Limbaugh do that. And I remember thinking it was a really critical error for someone like Mitt Romney to say no to SNL. Uh, I'd like to see more conservatives doing what you're doing, at least being open to. I mean, listen, you reach across. It maybe helps because you're libertarian and so right away they go, oh, I, don't, I don't know what that means. Can we book them? <laughs> uh, we're going to bring you back after this break. Larry Elder, okay. LarryElder.com. Don't leave because he's smarter than me.